To verse 13 of chapter 1, it continues, this is all one sentence, to say, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, believed in him, and you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So we are believers. It's believers who are being spoken of here in verse 4. He chose us, those of us who are now holy and faithful in Christ, those who are set apart for God, those who are— Okay, so we're, we're not holy and blameless— before the foundation of the world, and we're not believers before the foundation of the world. We don't even exist before the foundation of the world. And so it, it the best possible meaning that I could think that he th thinks Paul is talking about is that he chose to create certain individuals, the elect ones, to be believers, to be faithful and holy and, bl and blameless. Um, th that's the only thing I can, I can think cause he's, there's not, there's not a person to, to choose here. They're, they're non-existent. And so he has to be choosing in his brain. He has to be thinking, okay, um, I'm going to create a man named Brian Wagner and I'm going to create a man named Leighton Flowers and I'm going to mold and make them into people who eventually do believe, um, and, and do, uh, and are holy and blameless before, time even existed before we even existed. And then I'm going to create another guy named Joe Heathen, just using a, uh, obviously a pseudo name there, Joe Heathen, who's not going to be faithful and therefore not going to be holy and blameless in my sight. Um, and that's what he means by that. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. And I also would say he's, he's, he's still neglecting to see the, the, gr the grammar construction of this infinitive to be holy and blameless and how that is so connected to the choosing. And, and so he wants to, let me, let me say how I would read it. He wants, yeah. he wants to read it, chose us to be in Christ later in life. You know, he, cho he chose us before the foundation of the world <laughs> to be in Christ later in life when we're, after we're created and, and, saved right, right. Um, <clears throat> so that we would be holy and blameless in Christ. I mean, that's, that's how he's reading it. Right. How I'm, I'm reading it is, is the infinitive really is so connected to that main verb. It is, is like, the, it is like the emphasis. It's like the direct object of the action of the choosing. He's choosing us to be holy and blameless. It, it would almost be making like the us into an, what we call an indirect object. It's like it's like I say I hit Leighton the ball. Right. Well, I hit the ball. I I didn't hit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so so the emphasis is on me hitting the ball, and, and the same here that the emphasis is on choosing to be holy and blameless. That's the that's the and so it how I read it is he chose us who are now in Christ. He chose before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless. Right. And 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 the, and the now in Christ is the whole is the flow of the whole passage. And in and from verse one on, it's it's those of us who are now in Christ get all these spiritual blessings. Right. Uh, and and spiritual blessed isn't being chosen as an individual before the foundation of the world. The, the blessing is to be chosen to be holy and blameless. Now that we're in Christ. Right. Which, which makes more, more sense. And, it, and also it makes sense of Paul's other teachings, like I think of Ephesians 3, for example, when he talks about how this mystery that's been hidden that is just being made known that God from the very beginning has chosen to bring in the Gentiles. In other words, this is not a new plan that God just thought, thought up and th thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to let the Gentiles in. No, it, this is from the beginning. This is God. God has elected to bless all the families of the earth through the seed of Israel from the beginning. This is His plan right. from the beginning. It's not a new thing or a, a plan B for Him to say, "Okay, I'm going to let the Gentiles in now." Um, and that's what Ephesians three. He explains that pretty clearly in Ephesians three. And so it makes sense to say that he has chosen those who are in Christ, whether Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave free. It doesn't matter your, your heritage. It doesn't matter if you're circumcised. It doesn't matter if you've followed all the cleanliness laws, uh, the, all the rules, all that stuff. Anybody in him through faith, 
before the foundation of the world, God has chosen this for you. He has chosen right. these spiritual blessings for anyone who's in Christ Jesus um, for, through faith. That makes so much more sense of the whole text than the concept or idea that he has chosen arbitrarily certain individuals and has somehow created them to be faithful individuals uh, and created everyone else to be unfaithful individuals without any real choice of their own. I mean, for all practical purposes, no control over the choices they end up making because their, their choices are controlled by their nature, which they're born with by divine decree. And they really couldn't help the fact that they're unfaithful and thus unholy and blameless. Um, so again, I don't see anything around. I don't see any way around that one.